This video is about evaluating uncertainty in forecasts using prediction interval coverage. So far, we've looked at how to evaluate the expected value from a forecast, otherwise known as the point estimate. And we're going to start where we left off with the last lesson, having loaded all of our data, fit both seasonal and non-seasonal ARIMA models, and done some basic uh, visual and quantitative assessment of the point forecasts. But we're now going to look at the uncertainty as well. And so if we go back to one of our visual assessments of forecasts, we have this information about how much variation we expect to see in the observed values. And remember, these are prediction intervals. The darker blue is the 80% prediction interval. And so we expect 80% of the observations to fall within this range. And the light blue is the 95% prediction interval. And so we expect 95% of observations to fall within that range. And that is actually how we then go about evaluating uncertainty, which is figuring out what proportion of observations do fall in each of those ranges, and is it approximately the proportion that it should be. These values are stored inside the forecast object. So we'll go back to our non-seasonal ARIMA. And so inside ARIMA underscore forecast, there are objects called lower and upper. And if we look at lower, we'll see that we have the 80% prediction interval that's the lower value for it in each year and the nine in each month, sorry. And the 95% prediction interval, this is the lower bound for that interval uh, in each month. And the same thing uh, if we look for upper, we'll see that now we have the upper limits. And so for the 80% prediction interval in December of 2011, uh, the upper edge of that window is at about 0.21. And the lower limit of that window is at about 0.10. And so then we want to identify the observed points that fall within that range, within the appropriate range for each month. And we can do that by checking to see if each point matches both of those conditions, that it's greater than the lower bound and less than the upper bound. And so we'll store the result of that in a variable called in underscore interval. So that means it's in that prediction interval. And uh, we will do that by testing two conditions. The first is we'll check and see if NDVI underscore test is greater than the lower bound. So that's greater than ARIMA underscore forecast dollar sign lower, so that's that lower bound object. But then we have two columns here, and we only want to work with one of them, so we'll try the 80% inter interval out. And so to get that, we'll use square brackets, comma, and one. And so this says, give us all of the rows and only the first column. And that's one of our two conditions. We want them both to be true, so then we add the ampersand for and. And then our other condition is that we want NDVI test to be less than the upper bound. 
So ARIMA forecast, dollar sign upper. And again, we only want this 80% window, so we want the first column and all of the rows. So square brackets, comma one. And if we look at in interval, that will basically give us a series of true and false values. It's true if the point is in the prediction interval, if it's between the lower and upper bounds, and it's false if it's not in that window, if it's either less than the lower bound or greater than the upper bound. And so then we can determine the coverage by determining the proportion of points or the percentage of points that fall within that window. And so that's all of the trues are the number in the window, and then we want to divide it by the total number. And so we can do that using length of in interval square brackets, which says where in interval is equal to true. So this is going to give us back the piece of this vector where the values are true and then figure out how long it is, i.e. how many true values there are, and then divide that by the length of the whole vector in interval. And so if we run this, we get out the number 0 0.9, give or take. And we want this number to be as close to 0 0.8 as possible, because it's this 80% prediction interval. So ideally, 80% of our observed points will fall within that interval. And we've got about 89% of our points falling within that interval, which is pretty good. So now let's pause and have you try out the same thing by doing this process, but for the seasonal ARIMA forecast. Welcome back. Uh, what I did to uh, check the coverage of the seasonal model was I created another in interval uh, variable, but added seasonal to the end, set that equal to NVBI test, and we want that value to be greater than the lower bound for our now seasonal ARIMA forecast, make things a little wider for us here, at lower in the first column, and we also want NDVI test to be less than the seasonal ARIMA forecast upper bound, again in the first column because we're looking at the 80% window. And then we can calculate the coverage like before by finding uh, the number of points that fall within the interval, which is the length of in interval seasonal square brackets for where in interval seasonal is equal to true divided by the length of the full vector or all of the points that we looked at. So length of in interval seasonal. And we can see uh, that the resulting value is 0 0.83. So closer to the value, the ideal value of 0 0.8 uh, and therefore uh, a better estimate of uncertainty from our seasonal ARIMA, from our non-seasonal ARIMA. And that's because, as we saw when we fit the model, it's better at going up and down to capture those seasonal peaks. And so we don't have as many data points 
uh, sitting outside of the credible interval, outside of the, pardon me, outside of the prediction interval on the high end. So that's the basic idea behind how we evaluate uncertainty from forecast models. We use the prediction interval produced by the forecast and then calculate the coverage or the proportion of points that fall within a prediction interval. And we want that proportion of points to match the proportion associated with that prediction interval. Check, 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 check.